back to another video this time today we are going to be using dto preflop to go through different icm scenarios i haven't yet done a video on this so i'm not 100 percent sure what the best way to do it would be i don't know if i should in the future mark different hands myself then we dive into the dto preflop tool and we try and find similar scenarios and we try and see if I got the right answers or if people would prefer if I would just go through scenarios that arise a lot, start trying to understand how the play will be adjusted on final tables in regards to, sorry, in comparison to when we are playing in Chip EV, just in the beginning of the tournaments, the middle stages of the tournaments when there's no, you know, risk premium. So, I'm just going to pull up one hand that we played a few days ago. I have not looked at this yet, so I could be about to embarrass myself. I could be about to potentially find out that I played the hand okay. Um, Dom um, did actually send me a hand, which was a similar situation to the hand that we shoved the ace four off on the 55 mini bounty builder. People might remember it got opened by me on the button, big blind re-raised. I 4-bet ripped days 4 off, and uh, it actually is one of the hands that you use. Um, I might actually start with that, because Dom sent me that, just to say, you know, it wasn't that much of a disaster, but just, just to get a feel for how the tool works, I'm then going to go over one hand, and then I'm just going to dive in and look around. I would love if you got to me in the comments and told me if this is how you would like these videos to be done, or if there's something you would prefer to see, because I haven't done much content with this tool yet i'm going to be doing a video once a week they are going to be going out on fridays on my own youtube at easy with aces and dto will put them on their youtube as well if there's something you want to see if there's something you would first see less of of more just let me know in the comments and we'll look into it but this is this is i'm just going to dive into one hand very quickly that dom sent me i haven't looked at this yet he just replied or just sent me a message last night saying look at the four bet ripping range versus the three bet days four was good so we are going to go to DTO. DTO. And this is how the tool looks. So how it works is you'll see the stack setup. You can click here. Sorry, this is to change the spot. Um, as the stacks, it's 60 big blinds in the big blind, 30 big blinds, 80, 10, 20, 20. So this spot is it's, this spot's a little bit different. Now, it's a little bit, it's a little bit, deeper than with the spot we had but as you can see so how we're going to work here is i was on the button so we look at the range we have 80 big blinds just a 10 big blind so in general on the button you're going to be opening at most in chip ev i would say approximately 55 percent an average of overall stacks is going to be about 50 percent now this will depend on who's in the blinds it will depend on the stacks you're raising into but as you can see here, we're opening 74.5%. So we're already opening far more than we would in almost any chip EV situation. Unless, you know, there's two extremely weak players. Um, you really fancy your chances. But in general, you're just not going to see too many situations where you want to open this wide. I mean, we're opening queen two off suit. That ain't going to happen in chip EV. Almost against anyone in the blinds. We're opening jack four off suit. We're opening all these offs or these suited deuces. We're opening every pair. I mean, all the pairs will open. But as you can see, so we have an incredibly wide range, right? We have a really, really wide range. We even have some all-ins. Now, this will be quite sensitive. Whilst this will make chips, you, you can get really messed up if, you, like, if the big blind doesn't call correctly. So, all right, let's just do all-in, right? The big blind. What do you think they're meant to call? It's going to be real tight. There's a 10 big blind stack. I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess they can't even call ace-king. The, the only reason that, that I could be wrong about that is because sometimes in these situations, when you will become such a big chip leader, you can call a little bit wider than feels intuitive when you've studied ICM. So if this player had like 25 big blinds and would move up to a 50 big blind stack and would still have less chips than me if they won the pot, I think they have to call even tighter but maybe here they get the call a little bit wider so we just have a little look what did i get the call 
Okay, so they can call ace king and kings. All right, so I thought it might just be, uh, I personally thought it might actually be queens plus. I thought it might be queens plus and fold ace king. As we can see, it prefers ace king, I guess, just because we're going to dominate a lot of the shoving range and have an, such an insane opportunity to be a massive chip leader. So what I, basically what I'm getting at is, it, when you see this, so let's go back to the button. When you see this, this range, and you see these hands, you'd best be sure that players, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, sorry, is that a different range to what it was? No, it's not. Um, you best be sure that the players are gonna play back correctly. Anyway, to the spot that actually happens. So we raise, they fold, and then the big blind plays like this. So they're gonna be re raising, they're gonna have. What I feel like pretty intuitive bluffs, these hands are going to be close to break even to defend in this ICM setup. Um, and also they are going to block the range that wants to shove from me. So these are hands we're going to use. And also, you know, if they want to tree back call aces, you know, they have to offset it a little bit. So this is the range they use. They are going to go ahead, they are going to make it 8, and then remember little old Finty in the 55. Now, what I will say is in the 55, if your opponent, this is what I said at the time, so I 4-bet shoved in the 55 bounty, and our opponent did call with ace-queen. Do you think our opponent should call with ace-queen here when they 3-bet from the big blind? They do. Ace queen suited. Ace queen off. Fold. I'm surprised that they call ace queen suited. But again, I think this falls back to the way the stacks are set up. If they call here, they're going to have 120 big blinds and it's going to be 20, 30, 10, 20, 20. So they're just going to have a monstrous chip lead and they're going to win the tournament so often and they're going to dominate a lot of our four betting range. But um, yeah, let's go back again for a moment. So big blind does this. We see the raise. And what range do we use? Remember when little old Finty, the wheels in his head went rolling around? And I was like, I'm pretty sure the hands that we use here are the offsuit Ace X if we want to put the pressure on in spots where people are re-raising re and calling so incredibly tight. So I felt a little bit silly at the time. And still, it was a $55 incredibly soft tournament. So maybe if we were using a randomizer, instead of, the way, the way I would do this, right, the way I would personally simplify this spot, because obviously it's like pure ace-deuce, three quarters, half, quarter, a little bit. I, I, if you average them out, it's going to be about half. So if you want to randomize this, you could just like do 50-50 for all these hands. Nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to know. And... What you want to maybe change is if your opponents are going to really ruin things for you and Triba call too wide, these all of a sudden are going to be problematic for you. So if you think that your opponents are playing well, you see C. Darwin, you see Dom, you see Giraffe Ganger, you see whoever pulling the trigger against you, then sure, these are the hands that you use. But maybe in the 55 bounty, it possibly possibly uh was still a little a little a little bit on the punty side but i listen i can live with it it happened and the other hand i want to look at um we're going to go through a few more scenarios but the other hand that i want to see that i played let's see will this pop up on the screen if i do this okay so we're just gonna we're just gonna change for one moment to a different different view um because this is not great and we'll pop back so this is a hand that i played in the Benny builder 215 a couple of days ago um now i don't know I haven't looked at this yet, but I'm going to run a scenario. This is not going to be perfect. Um, there, DTR are adding more and more situations all the time, and I might be able to find something that suits a little bit better, but just because we're recording this video, I don't want to spend too much time looking, but I'm just going to look at it as if everyone has 30 big blinds. Is that a perfect model? No. I have some ICM pressure with this stack. I'm actually in the middle, so it's not perfect. This player uh, might not open as wide if, as everyone ha if they had 30 big blinds. But what I would say, now I don't know if there's anything to this, but I think it oftentimes, if you were going to make like wide steals, I still don't think they should be super wide in this situation just because there's 
an opportunity for them to show if there's an opportunity for this player to show if there's an opportunity for me to get shorter um but what i would say is that if the big blind is in the small blind it's the hardest spot for them to mess with you in general now not always but in general so they might have a few wider raises so we are we it falls to us in the big blind and from my study with the situations the hands that we want to use are usually hands that are close to break even calls and i think king deuce in this stack setup is pretty close to that and one thing the more i look at these sims is that you're just not meant to put that many chips in passively in a lot of situations i feel like you make much tighter falls in the big blind so this is something i haven't looked at yet and uh, i'm going to dive into it in dto and i'm going to see if this was one of the hand classes with king deuce suited that they like using or if i made a little bit of an error so we're going to find something similar i'm just going to go for 30 big blinds as you can see they're adding more and more spots all the time so we're just going to click icm we're going to click 30 big blinds and there's actually a bunch of them here this is the one that i'm going to use but there might be something that suits slightly better this is actually is this no that won't be it i'll have a little look so we are big blinds no okay not 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 no i think i think the 30 big blinds is going to everyone having 30 big blinds is going to probably be best so we click play the low jack is going to raise so let's first of all look at this range here pretty tight i mean it's 21 percent. it's not it's not that tight i mean i don't know if people are going to find these raises in the situation that we just had previously um i don't know if we're going to find all this but anyway this 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 is the range that they should be playing when everyone has 30 big blinds so they raise we see all falls i'm in a big blind now well like what i said was i think that the hands we will use here will be some asex and possibly suited kings as our bluffs what does dto like using it doesn't hate it but it doesn't love it all right i was wrong it like, look it's in there a tiny bit we see queen tree suited i had king two suited right so king two suited is not used there but like this comes in at four percent is it something i was going to be doing all the time no it wasn't um but i thought these hands would be used a little bit more but I, it still sticks it still kind of sticks to the offsuit asex i wonder if we get deeper do we start using the hands did i get the spot confused a little bit but this is it's still an interesting spot to look at and how you should play back so we go back in here sorry um this is the range that we are re-raising with we are raise calling this is when everyone has 30 big blinds by the way right everybody has 30 big blinds and we're still only raise calling half of the time with queens kings aces and ace king suited plus these are our bluffs okay so it still uses these offsuit hands i need to check at a deeper stack depth because i might have got a little bit more confused um maybe 40 50 big blinds we'll, we'll look at a one in a moment and we'll see if i've misapplied it or if maybe i just got it completely wrong um and anyway so go back to the big blind range what are we calling with so queens we want to call jacks plus pure call ace queens offsuit pure call ace queen suited pure call and this is when there's not a huge amount of icm pressure right there is icm pressure but everyone has the same stack so there's not like a four big blind stack or something but you still can't go getting jacks in and what are we going all in with so queens ace king we're using these hands as the bluffs which is usually um you know these are hands that i think are quite intuitive and i think most people at this point uh would be aware of this but in our spot we did raise and they called with eights just want to see what is the general play so they're actually folding it half the time um i think if we were to put our stack set up in where the stacks were i first of all only had 25 big blinds and there was a 13 big blind stack i think eights will actually fold a little bit more here um but as you can see we're, we're never going all in the, the the value that we're happy with these hands are you know mixing the call nines is mixing the fold tens is shoving sometimes i did, did this is something that i would personally 
Only do against people that you believe are capable. Because some people are just going to have, like, queens plus in spots where they even shouldn't be pure true back calling queens. But they're just going to have, like, aces, kings, and queens. And uh, no bluffs. And it's just very problematic. But we are trapping with aces half the time. Ace, king is just going to be pure shove, offsuit, or suited. And our bluffs are going to come from the same sort of region as their bluffs. These hands just tend, tend to be the hands that we use. So I just want to examine... Um, if we move to a deeper stack situation, so if everybody has 40 big blinds, do we now... Do we have everyone with 40 big blinds? Right. Maybe we don't have that. This is big blind, 20 big blinds. Big blind, 50. What is low jack have? I'm going to look at this because it's not... It's not... It's not the exact same, but I just want to see what do we use now when we can put a bit more pressure on. It still likes the offsuit. All right, so this, I mean, this, this is why we use this tool, right? This is why we study. I probably was using suited hands a little bit too much, which uh, just probably don't want to treat my fold as frequently as I thought. I am going to go look as we get a little bit deeper. But this is the beautiful thing about it. It's just presented in such a nice way to understand. You can, you can just, just mark hands when you're playing, right? You just mark hands. You mark 25 ICM spots. You pull them out. And you just look in these charts. And if it's something that's happening... Right. So let's say I'd use King 4 off here. Even let's say I'd use King 6 off. Is King 6 off, in reality, much different to these hands? It's not. It's not. So if you use that, it's fine. But probably you don't want to be using these hands because none of them, none of them even mix the tree bet. In the last spot, there was a little bit of king tree suited, but they're not using this here. I actually probably fold these hands versus the open on the final table. Um, the king sevens, the king sixes, the king, uh, the queen six. Um, let me see the stack set up again. Uh, we, are mess we, are, we are messing this up. Um, let me just grab this back up again. I'm, this is probably not the most efficient way to do this, but was this the one we were big blind 50? So yes, we want to click this. I just want to get the, why am I not seeing the payouts again? Am I an idiot? I am definitely an idiot. Is it here? No. Ah, what have I done? Okay, now we're in the completely wrong spot. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to just jump to the slightly deeper stack because I, I just, again, I want to see if this is something that I just completely have remembered incorrectly or this one's not really going to work. So we're going to see if there's any 60 big blind ones. Let's have a little look. Big blind, 40 big blinds. Button, 50, 60. All right, so this would not be too dissimilar. So there's a five big blind stack, right? So we're going to be incredibly incentivized not to play big pots here. So it it might not work, but we are getting to that stack depth now where we possibly want to have a little bit more playability post. So I'm just gonna look at this one again. As you can see, the payouts are 19, 20, 14, 30, 1060, and 790. And we are gonna be in the big blind versus the most aggressive open. I wanna just check what we will see happen in the big blind, do we see an Edie's King exited hands or if I just completely got it wrong? Again, a small bit, but you know, not not a small bit of this, a small bit of this, a small bit of this. It's only a very small bit. So yes, it is in there. It is probably it was probably not a terrible play by me, but maybe not the best. And we should still stick to more of these offsuit combos. There's obviously a little bit more playability um, with the Suited variations, and given the fact that this button open is just going to be an absolute obnoxiously wide open, um, as you can see here. That's only 61%. I actually thought this would have been wider. I'm a little bit surprised that that is only 61%, given that there's a five big blind stack. I guess maybe the stack is just a little bit closer. Maybe if this player had 100 big blinds, it would, uh, it would open a lot more. But even then... Um, they're going to open up pretty much all the suited hands. Some players will open every single one of these hands. So when we flat like the hands such as King X suited, Queen X suited, um, that I 
might have flicked in with the 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 trees fours and fives as bluffs occasionally we have a chance to you know flush over flush our opponent and win a very very large pot and become the chip leader so this is kind of just how i would go over this tool my headphones just turned off because i have no music on and i just pick different spots and i just try to find patterns that you will see all the time if you go through these spots on the regular you will begin which is something i need to do more because icm in my opinion is probably the area that people are messing up the most. The area where people are just giving away money, myself included. It is a very tricky, difficult concept to grasp. And oftentimes, if you start running your own sims, you might not put in the best outputs. And if you put in the wrong outputs, you're going to get bad answers. You are going to get bad answers. Luckily, if you use these sims, if you go through DTO, you will not have to worry about your inputs. You will just have to worry about trying to notice the patterns and trying to take this information into the real games and, you know, when the money matters most. I mean, I got Scoop coming up next week. The final table that I won last year, I made some horrendous plays that were just shockingly bad. Luckily, I ran well, but I punted off a serious amount of equity so I'm going to make it part of my daily routine that I'm going to study these spots all of the time. And as a team, we are going to try to get better. I'm going to look at one more. Um, what's a common scenario? So let's just hit ICM. 25 big blinds. Let's, let's just look how wide you can open when you're opening into a shoving stack. This, this is a very common situation, right? So it's small blind is 50 big blinds. Big blind is 40 big blinds, the cutoff is 20, and you're on the button, right? So, as you can see in this situation, shortest stack, once they fold, once they fold, you are now opening into two stacks that can shove on you. You also have to worry about this situation. So, remember we talked about having potentially, on average, a 50% button open in chip EV. There or thereabouts, it will depend on the situation, like we mentioned. How wide do you think we open in this situation? And which hands do you think we shove? Because we are going to get punished a very reasonable amount by the big blind in particular, I'd say, once the small blind folds. But the small blind can mess with us too. So, I, the truth is, I don't know the answer. If you start guessing percentages here, before you open them, you will start to learn it. I need the seminars that I attend when you, you have a guess and... Uh, you just feel more interactive. It's like it's it's better than just passively just opening it and not thinking about it at all. So we're gonna click here and we are down to 26% on the button. We are down to 26% on the button. That is really tight. And this is why if you don't study ICM and you just know chippy V situations, you are going to get murked. You are gonna get messed around with king tree suited forget about it fours forget about it as you can see there is no all-ins i thought there might be occasional all-ins with some stuff like ace five suited ace four suited um i i probably wouldn't do it in game because i wouldn't be sure about it and uh it would be quite a costly area if we error if we got it wrong but look at this a7 forget a6 forget it king nine off suit see you later 10 7 suited jack seven suited 10 nine these are all gone you just do not get to open them. So when we do raise, and we see a fold from the small blind, how wide can the big blind punish us versus our open? How wide can they go all in? They are going to, they're going to treat about a decent chunk. So what are we bluffing with? The usual suspects, the offsuit ace hands, the offsuit kings, the offsuit queens. This region, this little bottom left region is going to be a lot of your bluffs. So are you going to be able to remember to mix queen five, queen four? No. But if you look at these situations, again, look at the average. I actually kind of prefer to borrow to the, to the, to the pie. Um, as you can see, it's, this probably averages out half. So if you have these hands, you, you, just, you just open a little randomizer, randomnumber.org, 50%. If it's higher, you go with it. If it's lower, you don't. If you're one of those psychopaths, by the way, if you roll, if you roll in game and the aggressive action is the lower number, you crazy. And I don't want you near me. 
But as you can see, these hands are going to mix um, as the bluffs. These hands are going to be, this is going to be the true back call range. Uh, Tendus suited is not a hand that I would ever use, so that's quite interesting. Um, I'm not sure exactly why. Um, but yeah, again, patterns. Notice the patterns. Where are we using? What spots are we going to take advantage where we can open? And then the hands that we just go all in with uh, is going to be this region. Which most people in game will just click call. Most people will just click call. This is actually somewhat surprising to me in one way because if we look, it is against a button open, but it, we're obviously tightening up a lot. And if we do shove here, so excuse me, uh, we go all in and then we look at this range, it is very condensed pairs. Of course, we do have ace-queen, ace-jack suited, ace-tens mixing, just again, these are the kind of hands that I would mix, um, depending on the player. If I thought they were really tight, uh, I would make some pretty, pretty, pretty big folds. But that's why, I guess, I guess if they still, if you still have ace-jack plus, that's why the pairs are going to perform reasonably well. Um, but there is some situations where... You just don't get to shove those small pairs that feel kind of intuitive, but because the calling range, let's say if this calling range, you know, was tens plus, all of a sudden you don't want to be shoving deuces, trees, and fours. You want to be using hands like ace four, ace five, etc. That will perform reasonably well and block the top of the calling range. But um, yeah, for me, it's just all about diving in, trying to find different patterns. Trying to notice things that come up again and again and again, because that is what will happen. Is poker a complicated game? Yes. Does poker have patterns that come up time and time again? Yes. Does it have little heuristics that you can just take, you can just use and use as almost like a mental cheat sheet so that you're not going to think like the bot. It's impossible to remember every single little spot. It is. It's just impossible. Nobody thinks like that. Maybe Dom thinks like that. I don't know. Maybe maybe some people can. Bowie's in the chat. Bowie probably thinks like that. Bowie, Bo, Bowie probably knows every percentage down to a T. But we can't all be like that. So what I would say is, Mark hands, open up DTO preflop, go over them, and try and notice patterns. And what you will find is some spots will just blow your mind where you're like, I never do that. And it is something that happens all of the time. But that is anyway how I use this tool to study and how I will continue to use this tool to study and I will hopefully get better at ICM because it is where all the money is made in poker and I think it's where the most mistakes are probably still made in poker. If you have any questions in the chat, sorry, excuse me, if you have any questions, please get, them, get me in the comments. I will be streaming live this week on intodays.tv and we will be trying to use this tool more and more because I just think it's invaluable. I think it's a great way to learn ICM. And if there's anything you would like to see, let me know. I'll be back next Friday with another DTO. Pro we'll go post flop next week, actually. We'll do a post flop video next week. Just let me know which one you prefer. But uh, yeah, talk to you then.